Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey. But we're not going back 10,000 years today. We are dealing with tomorrow in the cannabis industry. The state of Hawaii, and I suppose other states, are now asking that all CBD products be certified, that they have been checked by laboratories and the manufacturers so that we know exactly what is in the product. So I have asked my two dear friends, and you all know I only talk to dear friends, I asked the gentleman from Camo who do have certified products, whose products are based uh, from the manufacturers, certified to be what they are. So I asked them to come join us today to talk about what it means to be certified. What, what happens? How does a product get certified? What does it tell us? Okay? Theo? Hello, how's it going? And James? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm, of course, you, I always, like I said, talk to my dear friends. Yes, but yes, you are the good. ones that I have known the longest, and you're the ones that are certified. What is a certification? Let's start there. Well, a certification, uh, actually it's called a COA, uh, yeah. in layman's terms, it's, it means Certificate of Analysis. And what that is, is um, it's a, a guarantee that you're not getting adulterated product, and the product has been tested and analyzed at a, a laboratory that has a certain uh, certification um, to be able to say this is clean medicine, this is clean to use, there's no uh, contaminant in it. So does it tell us what is in it? Yes, it does. So if we're getting CBD, what, what are we looking for? Um, when you get the certificate of analysis, the most important thing is to make sure that the laboratory that you're getting the test at has what they call an ISO 17025 certification, which is the International Organization of Standardization. Um, that certification gives the laboratory um, the accreditation to be able to analyze certain things, um, specifically for THC or cannabinoid content or CBD content. So, the, so in this case, I, I don't know if the bill is just for CBD or if it's for medical cannabis also. I, I would assume that for medical cannabis, they are already doing that. Yes. The distinction lies in the fact that, yes, if it is something that's being sold under a license as a dispensary, it has to have a COA. It has to be, have so a they, they're analysis. already doing that. They're already doing that. Um, in the, in the uh, I would say, the CBD market or the cannabidiol market. Um, that is not true for all states. It is not a standard at this point. The USDA and other uh, bodies, FDA, they're pushing towards having standardized texting, uh, testing, but uh, we haven't reached that point yet. Well, I, you know, they've had so many programs about the crap that's in the CBD and yes. you don't know what you're getting. Yes. And I heard you on one program talk about uh, some th synthetic yes. CBD. So what is <laughs> synthetic <laughs> CBD? What is that? <clears throat> some of the, the, how they make it and how they go about distilling it. Uh, there's different methods used to, to make it. And some people use things like butane. Some people Butane for what? To, we call it compounding or is it uh, more? To extract to the medication. Oh, right. from the plant material to extract it, to have a pure form or concentrate form uh, to be sold to the open market. They'll use that butane, sometimes hexane, sometimes um, ethanol. Mm -hmm. um, some, and most of those, those processes are safe processes, butane being the least safest. It's kind of outlawed in most states. Right. Um, but some people do still use butane, and that's, hence we need COA testing or certificate analysis for the products prior to the customer purchasing. So that would leave some kind of a trace residual. in the product? Absolutely. Yes, yes, it's concentrated. The residual um, solvents that's in there could be harmful to your health. Uh, some of them, um, if, it, if you're talking about parts per million, there's standardization. That's what comes with the COA. If the COA says that it doesn't meet the standard, then the product cannot be sold to the customer to keep it safe. Okay, now, um, I went to an event that had all kind of vendors. And some selling CBD. All of them were selling CBD in, in some form or another. And there was one group of women 
And the product was absolutely beautiful, packaged gorgeous from the mainland, slick lit, lit, uh, literature. But they didn't understand what the product was. They're just selling and they're just reading what it says. How do we know when it comes from beauty? I have to assume since the manufacturer spent that much money right. to do it, that. that it's okay. But how do we know? The only way you know is that their manufacturer has a certificate of analysis from an internal analysis standpoint and also a third party analysis standpoint, which is most important, which is, should be the requirement come 2020. I think they're moving towards making that a yes. standardization. But the reason I'm asking, would, is, it, would, is it on the label? Is it, like I said, these ladies did not package this here. Yes. This came from the mainland. Yes. Right. Most of them are on the label. Um, or on the label that is on the product itself, if there's a bottle um, on the side. The most recently, they've been doing QR codes. Yes, QR codes. So QR codes, you can scan it from your cell phone, and you, and you should be able to get a link to a website that has the, the analyticals on it. So. Oh, so that would be stamped on the, on the, on the label. Bottle. It, um, they're starting to make that a requirement as far as the packaging of CBD products and also THC products to where the customer themselves can get further information. If the person is not as inclined to provide, provide that information or education to the patient because you have a conflict when it comes to uh, making medical claim. So some people will not make that medical claim, which is hindering us from talking to the patient in a more clear you know, what I'm saying, uh, format of what this can and cannot do or should not do it for you, but um, scanning it makes it really easy. When the certificate analysis comes up, and then there's other ways to vet if that's a real certificate of analysis or not. Well, I guess that was my next question. How do you know it's real? Yes, um, there's things like we, we brought our COAs see. for all of our products, and I'll show you um, internal analysis as well as uh, third-party analysis, because we keep quality control pretty tight in the products that we have. Mm -hmm. um, say, for instance, this will be considered a internal analysis. It's third, third party, but this laboratory is associated with our um, manufacturer. And so um, third party analysis would be one that has nothing to do with the manufacturer. It's almost like a quality control or a quality assurance type thing so that there's no um, possibility that there's an error or any kind of um, collusion. I mean, what, what, that's a good word to use these days. <laughs> Everybody's using collusion. But okay. we, we, this is just checks and balances. Um, as I was saying before, our laboratory has ISO 17025. Most manufacturing laboratories that are at a higher level of standardization when it comes to uh, full, um, full spectrum um, or broad spectrum products that are bottled and, and sold to the public. Um, well, well, we, what about these uh, edibles that are made here. Yes. You know, some, how do we know that the butter that they make or the edibles, how do we know whether that is a little difficult to because you also, you have to test, it's like with the dispensary system, we test from seed to sale here in the state, right? So you have to know the quality of the seed then you have to test the plant after it's been uh, flowered, right? Mm -hmm. Then when it's time to make your product, you have to test the quality of the product after the product's made to make sure that there's no toxins in the product. And then you have to test it. I think they test it one more time before they're able to actually sell it. So it so goes to, to a thorough... Sell, but that's if it's already packaged. Yes. But, yes. But, but now we know people are making stuff. Absolutely. How do we know? Well, it's difficult to know because you have to trust the person who's preparing it knows the level of THC or CBD content in this plant. So if they're not getting their product tested, you have no way of knowing the amount of milligrams per milliliter, how much CBD or THC is in your product. So it's really up to the integrity of the manufacturer. Well, okay, now I've read so many labels and some of them have flowers you know, regular plants in them and whatnot. Does that, what about those? Do they have to be tested too? Yes. In the state of Hawaii, they do. Yes. As far yes. as I know. So um, if you have lily koi, for instance, yes. or whichever flavor, whatever or, flavor you want, when you add that to right. the CBD, um, does it enhance it? Does it? I'm, I don't know. That's no. what I'm asking. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. <laughs> I'm there asking. Are, or, or does that just do for flavor? Or? You, if we're dealing with terpenes, 
Your um, to answer yes. the first question, it's kind of up to if you decide if you're going to sell this in the open market to the public or is this for inter consumption at home? If you're making your own butter, it's up to you to oh, well, make sure you get it right, tested yes. maybe at a steep hill to see what the potency and what is the contaminant in it before you make your butter. Um, mm. Products that are made here, edible products that are made here, um, we're not able to make edible products and sell to the public. So whether that's tested okay, or not, so that, you should that's be concerned ouch. still. That's so kind of a, a, a gray market area. Is, we're, yeah. we're fighting for that because consumption is a big deal when it comes to dosage. Right. And edibles are a good way to consume, but we have to get, a, get an internal analysis or a standardization of what we can say is safe and what's not. Well, uh, yeah. but, 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 but I guess if you're buying it from a dispensary, yes. they already... Yes, their, their so analysis that, is pretty tight. Oh, absolutely, definitely. That, so um, for, for that, a child, that let's say for epilepsy, yeah. and they wanted a, something to... Like a throat a, lotion or a cough a, drop, something yeah. like that, they do offer. They do have edible choices there, but we don't have the full array that you may see in other states and other dispensary markets. Right. Um, but, and then when you talk about adding flavors, we're talking about terpenes at that point. Yes. And terpenes are another form of, uh, uh, right. of medicinal compound that are inside, inside, other than the cannabinoids, that adds the flavor or adds the odor or smell to the, to the formulation. Um, what they have found is terpenes do have a medical usage. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's really good at reducing anxiety and some other things. Um, so, I mean, we, we, we're here at this point to where COA is going to be required if you're going to sell to the public. You know, whatever you're doing in your home, that's up to you. You know what I mean? But um, if, there's, if you're putting yourself in danger, hopefully you can find someone, you can call Camo, um, to ask, you know, what are you doing safe and what's not yeah, safe. I was getting, that was my next question. They're telling you, okay, you got a card, you can have 10 plants. Right. Oh, sure I can. Okay, now I got these plants <laughs> and I'm growing them. Now what do I do? You know, right. well, how do I get, get it from the plant to something that I can use. Yes, yes. And then, even if I figure yeah. that out, it does it, th do it. I still have to have it tested? Yes. Uh, be safe. That's all I can say is right. if when you're consuming a product that you're not really familiar with, be safe because of contaminant and also be safe because of the level of dosage you're taking. Some people get into an uncomfortable situation when they eat an edible that they're not familiar with the dosage, and then they maybe have an uh, elevated, you know, saying effect Ooh, that they're not right. comfortable with. Feel safe, but and the fact that, you know, if you get <laughs> too high for an extended period of time, you may think... Uncomfortable, right? Yeah. Anxiety might very rise, you know? Oh. Too much THC might raise your anxiety. But, but I meant, okay, I would have to assume yeah. that the, the dispensary would, yes. would have some kind of level of tracking what's yes. here, what's this, what's this. What's and, and they do. But I, I'm talking about all what seems to be on the news is all of this you know, ABC stores selling yes. CBD. Yes, I know right. there's a service station on <laughs> all, all, all over here. <laughs> and right. It's selling, right. you know. Yeah. Uh, so it's everywhere. So what do we, how do we know? I, I was not, you know, I was yes. feeling really s pretty secure about all of this. Yes. From the time I met you. Yes. And then after watching the news and seeing people get sick and all kinds of strange um. things, and that's the difference. I mean, when we met, when we first started talking about CBD, yes. and I was first telling you that we have a certificate of analysis in our laboratories, the FDA uh, certified laboratories, we meet above the standard of most states asking. And so when we were talking about that, that all makes sense because that's all true. But when you have people who are not necessarily living up to that standard or their products are not nowhere near that standard, they're going to say it is to sell. Okay. Well, we need to take a break. And when we come back, we'll talk some more about. I want you to take the stuff, but I want it to be safe. Yes. Okay, we'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Stan Osterman, Stan the Energy Man, every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. If you're really interested in finding out what's going on in energy, especially here in Hawaii, but also all the way around the world, and especially if it has to do with hydrogen, look into Stan the Energy Man every Friday, 12 o'clock, Think Tech Hawaii. Be there. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Wendy Lowe, and I want you to join me as we take our health back. On my show, all we do is talk about things in everyday life, in Hawaii or abroad. I have guests on board that will just talk about different aspects of health in every, in every way, whether it's medical health, nutritional health, diabetic health, 
You name it, we'll talk about it. Even financial health, we'll even have some of the Miss Hawaii's on board and all the different topics that I feel will make your health and your lifestyle a lot better. So come join me. I welcome you to take your health back. Mahalo. Hello, I'm Marcia Joyner and we're back. And we're talking about cannabis and this new wave of needing to be certified. I guess being cert medicine isn't new about being certified, but we see all of this, all the craziness that's going on. Mm -hmm. Tell me real quick, what about vaping? Uh, people with lung issues, and I don't understand vaping. So t talk to me. I've noticed the biggest issue with the vaping seems to be that they're unsure how to properly vape. Um, vaping is similar to smoking cigarettes. And what the patients are coming down with are inhalation burns. It's mm -hmm. not specifically to, it's not specific to CBD or cannabis, anything like that. Just so any kind of vaping. Right, so smoking cigarettes, if you're huffing cigarettes or cigars, you smoke too long, take a long drag, Temperature goes up, so you're hurting, you're damaging your, your air passageways. So what you're seeing are people who are vaporizing oil. Oil is a little thicker than water, so essentially they're damaging their airways with this thick oil. It's way too hot, and it's because they don't understand they're they're hopping up the uh, you call it the batteries. Their 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 vape. The pens. temperature at which the, the substance is burned is very important. If it's that, burning at a higher temperature. That something's burning inside that vapor? Um, yes, there's a heating element in it. There are oh. different forms of heating elements. Some of them give off carcinogens, like the wick. Like a, there's a, a, a candle-like wick that's inside some of them. There's a heating element that's made of harmful metals sometimes when you get the bootleg versions of it. But what we tell people to prescribe to is the ceramic uh, vaping element it's or the heating cleaner. element or either the titanium. So, but there's a heating element in, in them. What, what is Juul? Oh, that's it's something totally brand. different. That's, that's dealing with tobacco and nicotine. Juul is not a brand of vaping. It's a brand of cigarette um, or, nicotine. or nicotine. They call it Juul because that's the apparatus, you know, or the company that's representing that brand. Vaping is a way they do that. They have other substances. Uh, okay, so vaping yeah. is the process of... It's the, it's the process. It's, it's almost like a uh, delivery process for the medication. Oh, okay. But, and it has oil, and that's what burns the lungs? The... We, um, like steam burns when you're cooking, yeah. uh, very, uh, very similar to that. They're turning up the temperature on the vaporizers, which in turn causes a larger cloud effect. So they're probably burning for show because people smoke and like to blow smoke rings, things like that. In turn, <laughs> right, because they're hopping up the I mean, temperature, they're that, damaging yeah. their lungs. And um, I'm assuming that what it is is the younger generations aren't being educated properly on why pe patients are vaping. Maybe they're seeing somebody smoking and they think this is just what we do, you know? Yes. They don't actually know that they're medicating. So it's more so, at least I'm seeing more so patient education and proper education on how and why they're vaping right. to prevent a lot of those injuries. Well, but now, okay, so we understand that that's a method that's used by the dispensaries for, but what, now that it's moved out of the dispensary and into the public, do they know what they're inhaling? No, this, that's a big part of the problem is synthetics. Synthetics are, are a huge part of our market. Um, the issues or the unsafe um, delivery of medications. One, you have the heating elements that may or may not present a, a problem. Of there's, there's a heating element inside that thing. But then you also have the thing, formulation. Huh? It's a heating element inside the apparatus. But also the oil or the, the product that you're vaping mm -hmm. can have carcinogens in it because of synthetics. Mm -hmm. The manufacturer is not counting on you to vape that successfully. I mean, they will take that claim that, you know, this is what you should do and they'll have instructions for that. But most of them will bootleg it and hope that you have a better outcome. But you see what's in the media today. There's even some deaths that are contributed yes. to synthetics. This is just like when you have spice and bath salts. Those are synthetic forms of materials that people are using for medicinal aid and they don't know any better. That's what is, what, what did you say they were? Like Spike 99, the Spike? Spice, Spice, Spice. Synthetic, synthetic, uh, synthetic cannabis, cannabis, pretty much. Yeah. 
Yeah. You can you, you used to be able to buy those at retail head shops and things like that or pipe shops, uh, along with um, what is that Sati Sal salvia, S salvia, like right. salvia things like that, hallucinogens. But the the synthetic products are what is harming our public, and that's what we have to get a grip on. That's what the FDA is mainly saying. With well, that's why I asked products. you to come yeah. because we it's all over the news. Yes, and that's why I asked you to come be. to talk about the. What's safe and what's not safe. Yeah, stick with the botanical, stick with the organic growers. Stick with, I mean, if you don't know anything about anything, Google can be a good friend. I mean, if you Google how to read a certificate of analysis or COA or cannabis or TAC or CBD, because we need to inform the public. If they have the power on their hand right there in their, in their cell phone or on their computers, on the Internet. So we want to encourage them to do that until the health department has the convenience or the capacity to do more, you know, to educate more. Well, would the health department educate? Really? Um, they I, haven't so far. Camo can. <laughs> yeah, I Camo know you will can. definitely I, show up. I know you so. will. And that's why we're here. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I would say in the future, they're looking towards this, but of course they're now waiting you, for FDA and, and well, other federal but, regulations. Now, you know the health department, and you were at the hearing, where they've got all of this equipment, yes. and they don't have people, they don't have technicians. Unfortunately, I don't know how to figure that problem out. It's a well, that's a, that's a hiring. That's the state. Yeah, that's the state has to hire. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a huge demand for students that want to come to this industry to help improve the opportunities. Like when you hear them say, we don't have enough money for research, we don't have enough research being done to prove out some of these conditions that instead of making a medical claim, we want to make proof, clinical proof, that these things are having better patient outcomes. You know. But you're, now you're doing some research. Um, we're, Tell we're, us about what, what yes. kind of research your, your company is doing? Yes, well, you know, we hosted Dr. Sue Sisley here uh, not long ago, um, back in September, for our event in the 329 Veteran Stand Down. Mm -hmm. And so, as an extension of the study she's completed, you know, she's recognized the only person that had MD that has successfully did FDA approved clinical trial for cannabis use for PTSD, uh, reducing the symptoms of PTSD in veterans. So, we want to definitely uh, try to partner with her or do an extension studies with her. Um, let her lead that protocol because now that it's successfully done, that's a protocol that can be duplicated in many efforts. But also on the CBD side of thing, we would like to approach uh, a person like uh, a doctor, uh, Yasmin Hurd, who has done successful studies much like Dr. Sisley, but only with CBD and PTSD and opiate um, use disorder. And so our area really is to maintain a database of patients and start to encourage patients to enroll in databases to make themselves available to get proper medication or a certified medication, and also to be able to learn how to dose and get that education, and so they can understand what this medicine is going to do for their body or their condition. So now, am I right about saying that uh, CBD and THC, whichever form you have, can bring you, ease you down from opiate Dependency is that correct? Did I say that right? Yes, there's yeah. there's definitely some benefits to it. Definitely some benefits uh, as far as cravings or withdrawal effects. Yes, it's going to reduce those. Um, we've seen that successfully, um, and I would encourage people to Google Dr. Sue Sisley, um, Google Dr. Yasmin Heard, um, watch CNN Weed One, Two, Three, Four, and I think Five now. Very informative. And it's, it's a very informative approach with Dr. Um, what's the gentleman's name? His name. Oh man. Sanjay Gupta. Oh, oh yes. Sanjay Gupta, right. CNN right. correspondent. He was one of the opponents leading. Right. But now he's all the way forward because he, he was encouraged to do his research. And those five episodes of CNN Weed are very, very helpful to understand COA, to understand what the market is doing, where it's going, and who's doing the re actual research. Because we're trying to encourage the UH Cancer Center, John A. Burns, uh, Queens Hospital, and anybody that has research capacity to partner with us so we can start looking more into this because uh, if the only excuse the progress is we don't have enough research. I think we have plenty of opportunities to do research in Hawaii. I can't imagine why we don't have enough research. I mean, that seems like a weak... It's federal. It's, it's a lot of people who have federal is? funding, and they so, don't want anything yeah, to interfere with Federal funding, that, they know, can't touch it. I totally it, yes. understand that, but that's just why CAMO is building towards that capacity. Yes. Um, we don't get any federal funding. We would hope in the future to have mm -hmm. some federal funding being a 501c3, but working with the state and completing a registry, of veterans and others, so they can come in. Anybody that has a qualifying condition, as you know, we're trying to add uh, opiate use disorder to the qualifying conditions. And, you know, the people who are who have their three to nine cars for the last eight to ten years, 
we, we owe them something besides just the education piece. We need to show them, you know, factually and clinically what this medicine can do for your body. And so, but now, of course, the VA is a problem. Well, the VA is a problem because of Uncle Sam. The VA is, I wouldn't say they are a problem. Um, they need to update their um Yeah, but they're still up Uncle Sam. Yeah, well, of course, they are Uncle Sam. We they, are Uncle yeah, Sam. Well, I mean, that is Uncle Sam. There's a category, but fortunately, we do have a research center and develop, research and development center up there at the VA here. Oh, good. And so there may be an open-door opportunity. We're looking at approaching their institutional review board, which is their clinical staff that actually looks at what research they would like to participate in. So maybe we'll have an annual with them here pretty soon. Well, that's great because they just, well, as you know, they just write prescriptions for opiates and, you know, the guy says, well, I'm not doing so well. Here, take some more. Yes, and that's what <laughs> contributes to their um, lackluster approach to cannabis is because if opioids, which is FDA approved, have kind of put them in position to be responsible or liable for death, for suicide, for any type of form of side effect or withdrawal symptom, addiction, um, I would say that they should approach things a little different. But because we're dealing with botanical medicines, I think we should have the opportunity to, to go forward. And we have the safest medicine known. Yes, because they approve alcohol, and there's nothing worse than that. <laughs> right. And they approve cigarettes and yeah. cigars, and that's we're, we're pretty bad. Yeah. I, I think, especially because Hawaii has such a big holistic medical component yes. to it, uh, whether that's clinical-based or whether that's patient-based, I think we're going to have an excellent time in the, in the future. Yes. Well, you know, uh, it's always a pleasure <laughs> having you here. <laughs> and I, learned, I have learned so much from, from you two yes, over, over the couple of years we've been doing this show. Yes. And so you're going to come back and sure. keep us informed on, on the progress and see how you do with the research, because that's yes. a vital that's piece of this. Big step. That's the next big step. Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming, and we will see you next time. Thank you.